daddy's home. I mean, uh, welcome to another episode of Suggesting. It's been a little while, I apologize, but we're finally getting back into the swing of things. And Valhalla, it's taken me so long to beat, and I just lost a little bit of motivation, but we're back. And with that, I'm playing a game that my friend's been telling me about for years, and I just not played it. And then it was free on PlayStation Plus a while ago, and I thought, do you know what? It's time we tried it out. So find out today if I'll be suggesting Bioshock 1. Bioshock is a 50s inspired looter shooter narrative experience that will have you in a deep underwater city hidden from society called Rapture. For the vast majority of the game you'll be shooting crazed citizens with a myriad of weapons in your arsenal along with some elemental superhero-like powers to spice it up. There are so many to take on that I often felt like I was in a dungeon crawler, but without further ado, it's time to break it down. When I played Bioshock, I felt quite nostalgic to when I was in a school computer room playing Unreal Tournament, running around with a big gun in hand, definitely made me reminisce a little bit. I love the steampunk 50s aesthetic. I ate anything deep underwater so I never felt truly safe. Everywhere was leaking, cracked and fallen into a state of disrepair. And you could tell it's way past its prime. At the start of the game it feels like you can explore relatively undisturbed. Ammo was sparse and enemies few but lore is a plenty. A problem I always have with these kind of games is everywhere looks so similar so I would get lost. However there was an arrow pointing at the objective which you could toggle on and off. And if there was a flaw, I kind of became dependent on this to make some notable progress. And when it was not in use, like finding items in an area, I felt blind. But that could be a me problem. Largely though, it was fine. Much like Metroidvanias, there will be a few abilities to help you unlock more areas, such as Incinerate to get rid of those pesky ice blocks. But these are very few and have little bearing on the game. What does then? Well, you cannot go anywhere without hacking. Everything can be hacked. Drones, turrets, vending machines, ammo machines, health dispensers, and security cameras. These are a fun little minigame which will have you connecting a pipe to a goal. It can either be really hard or really easy. It is randomised. And I only got soft locks out of this twice. But the penalty is simply a bit of damage that cannot kill you. So, it isn't the end of the world. The only problem I had is that because you can hack everything, when I hit the 10 hour mark near the end of the game, I simply got fed up of that process. So they do provide something. Auto hack tools, these can be found, crafted and bought. I would say refrain from buying these majority of the time because money is a limited resource better spent on healing or ammunition. And trust me, by the end you'll have no problem crafting or buying. I couldn't go crazy, but I had no problem topping up my Eve, certain ammunition, and med kits when I needed them. There are many perks which can help with all aspects, and they're split up into physical, which can help with things like getting more HP, getting HP when damaging, and so on. Then there's combat. Well, need I say any more? And then last off, there's engineering. These can assist in many ways, and in the case of hacking, engineering is very helpful. Anything giving you more time, removing alarm panels, and much, much more. As a whole, I didn't get tired of running around, listening to how Rapture fell to pieces, killing tons of splicers, and saving girls from big daddies. But you know what I will say? Here's something I didn't like. I had to say that name so often on stream that it made me saying big daddy feel like a normal sentence. I no longer wretch at the idea of saying it, and I have this game to blame for all of that. But speaking of Big Daddy Senpai Master Supreme, let's talk about the combat. Shooting this game reminds me of the old school shooters that I used to play in secondary school and that was Unreal Tournament. I've actually never played Doom or Wolfenstein, but anyway, something you cannot moan about is a lack of variety. You have a Magnum, Thompson machine gun, shotgun, grenade launcher, chemical thrower and crossbow. The only problem I had by the end game was that I would miss one of them as I was cycling through and I'd have to find it again. That's it. Yeah, some guns have way less use than others, but if that's my only real problem, it shows it's a pretty good system. A normal letter for me by end game was a chemical thrower, crossbow, the shotgun for some more damage, and maybe the machine gun if I wanted to spray and pray. Ammo at the start is very hard to find. I usually opted for the wrench and electrical power because 
I found Eve in more supply than bullets. It's nothing too creative. There is a pretty strong aim assist, so it is very forgiving. So even if you aren't great at controlling them, you're fine. I would say, however, never use the first person mode. I thought it would work well for the crossbow, but it locks you in place if there's an animation happening, which for the crossbow is after every single shot. And the game being more run a gun, it doesn't suit it anyway. Third person, the shooting is much nicer. Still a bit of aim assist, but unlike the other games, such as COD and Battlefield, it actually hits where the crosshairs are, which sounds silly, but I have to clarify that. Every weapon and power could be very easily cycled with the L1 or R1 respectively. Movement feels pretty standard, there aren't any fancy sliding, sprinting, and even what they do implement like jumping or crouching, it's a little bit awkward to activate. I hate anything that involves me clicking my analog sticks, but obviously this isn't their focus, it's run and gun. Powers are many, and they are the following. Electrobolt, which is great for stunning enemies, but more importantly, disabling sentry drones or turrets to give you the chance to hack them. And if you combine that with the crossbow, you will drop a big daddy in seconds. Telekinesis is exactly how it sounds. You have the force, and as a Star Wars fan, I loved it. But the other uses were grabbing enemy projectiles like grenades and firing it back, throwing dead enemies, and even grabbing items out of reach such as medkits in EVE. Incinerate is exactly as it sounds. Burn your enemies or ice to access locked areas and maybe even find some loot under there. Winter Blast, well, who doesn't love freezing someone then wrenching them into a thousand pieces? But you do sacrifice loot doing that. It's also a good way to stun someone for a bit. And the last of significance that I use is Hypnotize Big Daddy, which does exactly what you think. He has to be neutral because they are protectors and they don't automatically aggro you. So instead, make them your protector. Hell. I have a showdown and make it daddy on daddy. Don't take that out of context, but don't hit the wrong one because you will undo your work and he will turn on you. The final powers are Enrage, Security Bullseye, Cyclone Trap, Target Dummy and Insect Swarm. I'll be lying if I said I used any of these more than once, but all of the powers can be upgraded to be more effective at the cost of more EVE. Combat perks, I can't even begin to cover all of these. There are so many, and these are typically light buffs. Once fully upgraded, you can have 5 combat, 5 engineering, and 5 physical. They can also stack so if you want max heals or max damage. If it isn't just a slightly better version, you can use the original to maximize it. There are roughly 62 of these, so please forgive me if I don't go into detail. Big Daddy. These behemoths are protectors of the Little Sisters. They carry a DNA desired by all. It enhances your power so you'll be given a chance to rescue or harvest them. As you can imagine, I took the rescue route, which gets you a rather nice ending. But, Big Daddies, they have a couple variations, which I usually see as either ranged or melee. They are a massive struggle at the start, and by the end of this, I had it down to a T. And that was simply shock, crossbow, and repeat till he drops. Their sounds are terrifying, they make their presence known, and I really did enjoy taking them on because they are a challenge, certainly compared to the other enemies you typically face. Enemy variety. There's a decent amount, but generally, I split them up into ranged, melee, or race. Which were these teleporting guys? And Big Daddy, not including bosses. And there are different versions of all of these, but I simplified it because honestly, that is what you'll be looking out for. It's varied enough for the time spent, but you certainly end up doing what I do, which is just lump each type together. Last and by no means least is the camera. This is essential to your playthrough. Taking pictures of your enemies will add to a research meter and has multiple goals. Each level you obtain will do things such as reveal weaknesses, but also increase the base damage you do. It turns spider splices from a serious challenge to this enemy I would just slap off the wall in seconds. The harder the difficulty, the more you should do this, but personally, anything above medium on a shooter, and you're a mad person anyway in my opinion. But yes, use the camera. Story is the biggest motivator behind all of this. As a person who had many horrible plane crashing nightmares, I did not appreciate that, but at least you survived the crash. Swimming amongst the sinking wreckage, you reach a tower, some kind of underwater metropolis called Rapture. And it looks great, even though I hate being underwater, it is a cool concept. 
and you are given a briefing about the founding and the founder of this city, along with his ideology behind everything. You land in Rapture after taking a submarine tour, where you are greeted by a splicer who is mangled and brandishing a hook, crazed and smashing up. Something that grabbed me was the immediate horror vibe it gives off, and I must clarify, it doesn't maintain that, but I digress. You are welcomed by a charming, friendly voice, which is an Irish chap called Atlas, who will guide you through the city to help free it from this madman called Andrew Ryan, along with saving his family. I won't go into the story because, as I normally say, this is something you need to experience. However, what I will tell you is for its length, they give you a pretty good motivation. A side area that is absolutely bonkers, and I really did appreciate the whole theater, theatric drama this guy gave, and just the life he brought to it. But, when I say for its length, I personally feel there's only ever so much running and gunning I can do, even if it's well thought out. So, the 12 or so hours really hit the sweet spot. All in all, Bioshock is a fun, thriller FPS reminiscent of the shooters from the past. I must say that I was not expecting to like this game. It seemed way too much like horror at first, and FPS stories you can kind of lack. But, it's the perfect length, and I really did enjoy it, which is a very, very pleasant surprise. So yeah, I am suggesting Bioshock. Ah, you've made it to the end of the video. Welcome! Thank you so much for watching the whole thing. As always, you are my favourite. And I would just like to take a quick moment to thank our Patreons. So, thank you very much to Samson, Sly, Super Tanukian, MRC, and the First Falcon for your continued patronage. We actually just recently finished our first movie month thing that we do so if you want to be a part of that and see some early stuff be sure to click the link below and check out our patreon i post all our artwork i organize some exclusive live streams along with some occasional either movie nights or anime stuff or uh, all over the place yeah thank you so much guys have a wonderful christmas this will be our last video before the, the festive season and i look forward to seeing you guys after that merry christmas everyone and of course may the force be with you